port of Dover this morning, the fight back continued. Most of the 800 crew P&O has fired worked here. The mood today, a mixture of anger and anxiety. They've got a little boy, do you know what I mean? They've got, got a seven month old baby and this is what they do to us, it's terrible. Yesterday morning, my son and daughter-in-law were getting up to get themselves a mortgage, get themselves a new house so they, so they can carry on with their lives. And then they got this video call in Hull, Liverpool and Larne, the unions mobilised and their outrage is shared. The Church of England has condemned P&O's decision to sack its crews remotely. This is inhumane and totally unacceptable. They're, they're treating human beings with little value. And we're saying, as the church, we're saying humans are of value. We do not discard them. The latest accounts show that P&O Ferries Division Holdings Limited made a loss of £103 million in 2020, a year in which passenger traffic collapsed by 65%. The accounts were filed in September last year and show that P&O was still a going concern six months ago. They also reveal that DP World, which owns P&O, offered to lend the company up to £160 million, but warned P&O would need more if things got worse. Pandemic restrictions have since eased, but ferries run on diesel and fuel prices have surged. P&O says it understands the distress it has caused, but it had to sack its staff. The government disagrees. Obviously, uh, lawyers and others will be uh, looking at it. I know the unions are, are very concerned to make sure that the actual laws have been followed here. It's not just about the letter of the law, it's also about common decency. P&O plans to start sailing again in the next day or two by replacing the crews it fired with freelance workers on less generous contracts. This agency in Scotland is supposed to be providing some of the temporary staff. Tonight, two ministers have written to P&O condemning its behaviour as appalling. The letters say the government is reviewing the contracts it has with P&O and DP World and that the insolvency service is assessing if P&O followed the correct and legal processes when it dismissed its crews. If P&O is found to have broken the law, it faces an unlimited fine. The company says it's currently losing a million pounds every day its fleet sits at anchor. It risks losing much more than that as a result of its actions. Joel Hills, News at 10, in Dover.